Autoclaves are used for one of the most common processes in the manufacture of sterile medicines, namely to sterilize finished medicines that are sealed in their final containers when it's called terminal sterilization. They are also used in microbiology laboratories for sterilizing media and equipment. Sterilization is a well-established process, having been invented by Nicolas Appert in 1810 in response to a 12,000 franc reward offered by Napoleon Bonaparte to anyone who could devise a practical method for the preservation of food for armies on the march. High temperatures kill microorganisms, and by killing, we mean that it causes irreversible damage to some biochemical which is essential for the microorganism to continue to metabolize and to reproduce itself. This is a pretty primitive definition of the distinction between life and death, make but liquid has... nutrient media cloudy, or to form a colony or colonies on solidified agar media. The criteria for cloudiness and for colonies are that they are visible to the naked eye. The media and incubation conditions have to be suitable. Microorganisms are killed by oxidation of intracellular membranes. These oxidative reactions are quite slow, and any practical application of dry heat technology for sterilization requires temperatures of 160 degrees Celsius or higher over exposure periods measured in hours. However, if high temperatures are delivered in the presence of moisture, a different set of killing reactions take place. With moist heat, kill is achieved by coagulation of intracellular proteins. In fact, we are all is familiar protein, with protein, pure protein, albumin. In a fresh egg, it's clear liquid. When you boil the egg, the albumin solidifies and changes color to become opaque and white. Have you ever seen anyone change the white of a hard-boiled egg back into a clear fluid? Of course not. This is exactly what happens when you expose microorganisms to high temperatures in the presence of moisture. Their internal structures go the same way as the white of an egg. As with eggs, these reactions start in microorganisms at temperatures of about 80 degrees Celsius. Microorganisms die off rapidly and at that temperature, even with safety margins applied, standard sterilization processes for foods and pharmaceuticals require only 15 minutes exposure. At a pressure of two atmospheres, water boils at 121 degrees Celsius. At a pressure of three atmospheres, water boils at 134 degrees Celsius. Quite simply, this was Appert's trick because the autoclave is just a pressure vessel, and 121 degrees Celsius is not an optimal function in relation to killing microbes at the top, and because air is heavier than steam, all the air is forced out through a drain valve at the bottom. The last place to be exposed to steam is in the drain valve, and for this reason, it's a universal feature of all commercial autoclaves that there is a temperature sensor in the drain. We talk quite a lot about sterilizing liquids, but by far the hardest thing to sterilize are porous loads, such as rubber stoppers, flexible plastic hoses, cartridge filters, as well as garments, etc. The problem with these items is that air can get trapped in them. And this is because the killing effect is dependent on transfer of the latent heat of steam to the object when the steam condenses on the object. To avoid these difficulties, the air is usually pumped out several times. To be replaced by heating is usually electrical, but you can still see some of these autoclaves being heated on gas rings. Air and steam are vented through a valve on the top. These are perfectly good for sterilizing liquid loads such as media, but we should not really ever be considering their use for any porous or wrapped materials. The risk of air remaining within porous materials or packaging is just too serious to contemplate killing microorganisms using heat. It's called a Biological Indicator Evaluator Resistometer, or as they are charmingly called, beer vessels, and have rather complicated specifications and control systems to match. For our purposes, all we have to know is that they work on a square wave principle. There's practically no time and therefore no heat input in raising the temperature to the holding point and practically dilute them.
split them out on agar and count the number of colonies developing. Let's call the number of colonies lowercase n. When we plot our colony counts, the graph looks like this. But that's no good at all. We can't get the scale organized to displaying of the vertical axis on our graph to plot the logarithm of the number of colonies, and we find our data plots as a very good approximation to a straight line. This is called the survivor curve, and this regular linear form has been shown by many, many sciences workers. based on the idea of the survivor curve being linear when plotted on a semi-logarithmic basis. But if there's no zero on the vertical axis, you can never determine a time of exposure at temperature T, which will guarantee that every microorganism will be killed. What then is 0 0.1 of a microorganism? On the other and hand, what we can define sterility scientifically on a probabilistic basis, and this is what has been done. Sometime in the 1970s, when we count microorganisms in suspension, we can count them down to 10 colonies per sample, and then, with decreasing accuracy, down to one colony. Then, by using a different technique and some statistics, we can count which are more sensitive, while gram-negative bacteria have the steepest slopes because they're most sensitive to killing by steam. Practical autoclaves are not square wave. It would be impractical, not to mention prohibitively costly. What we can do is use the F0 concept and integrate the killing effects contributed during heat up and cool down.